Hi everybody, my name's James. I'm from uh, a company called HS um, and I'm here to help you guys answer the question why work for Google when you could essentially build your own? So my background is that I'm um, an anaesthetics and intensive care doctor, so I was clinical for five years. Um, while I was a doctor, I was very much involved in driving ground floor innovation in, um, looking outside to digital solutions and helping my departments run better and run more smoothly. Um, I then took a bit of time out, I did a master's uh, medical education, I worked at the BMJ. I worked at a couple of the arm's length bodies of the Department of Health, so NHS England, NHS Innovations, Health Education England, learned a lot about policy and politics and kind of how people write that stuff to get around it when you're actually trying to innovate. Um, and for the last couple of years I've run the digitalhealth.london accelerator. So what that does is that that selects the best 30 digital health businesses um, for their ability to help the NHS and drives them into the NHS. Now I'm leaving that in a month's time because I've set up my own health tech accelerator called HS, which I'm here to talk to you about. And as Sinead mentions, I also do a couple of days a week for the Health Foundry. So just in terms of what I've sort of accrued over the last few years, so I've helped 60 startups get 30 million pounds of funding. Um, we've achieved 50 NHS pilots and contracts and there's 348 sites in London with a new innovation for the companies that we've helped so awesome impact and as you can see I'm very impact driven um, so really proud of those stats. Um, and this is kind of what I'm here to talk to you about so just a show of hands who's who works for a startup and who's interested in starting their own? Cool so it's really risky, is what this graph shows. You can't quite see it, but risks down the side and times along the bottom. So what this slide's essentially showing you is that it's really risky to start a startup. So Y Combinator data says that 50% of startups will fail in year one, and the timescales are long, you know, one or two years at this sort of level of high risk. So my job, running an accelerator or running accelerators is to essentially make it less risky for startups in their initial um, phase of life, thank you, um, and to shorten these timeframes. And that's through the knowledge, mentorship, support, advice that we can give um, and the people that we can connect those startups to to help them along their journeys. And this is kind of what happens in the system. So if you're thinking of starting your own startup, what essentially needs to happen is that you need to spot a problem. You need to then, by luck, find someone else who thinks they spot the same problem um, with complementary skills. You two will come together to form a startup to solve that problem. Now, where do you find that co-founder? Are you a productive team? Do you have complementary skills? Do you have the business skills necessary? It's the perfect storm when you can get all of that together in the right way, and that's you know, a lot of the reasons why startups fail is that they don't have all of those ingredients. And the other thing is that if people spot problems in their day and, and they create solutions, often it's very disconnected from industry. And whenever you create a solution, industry always tends to turn around and say, you know, is this a real problem? Is there a customer? Can it scale? Can it sell? How big's the market? Questions like that. Now, even if you do get a solution to a real industry problem that has customers, you come across the same problems, you know, who do you speak to? Is there a sales channel? An industry again just turns around and says, what problem do you solve? Does it save or make us money? And will anyone actually want it? And these are the things that we help. So whenever you have an idea for a startup, those, those of you thinking of starting your own startups and those that are working within them, you know, I give a lot of advice to different startups and I, I harp on about, anyone who knows me knows that I harp on about this all the time, but every startup should be able to answer the questions, what problem do you solve? Because once you know exactly what problem it is you solve, I can then direct you to the right person within healthcare whose problem that actually is. Now that might be someone really obscure, it might be a, an associate director of nursing, it might be a director of transformation for a hospital, it might be a CCG lead. But you need to be very succinct in being able to say what problem it is you solve. Because then you know whose problem it is and you can be directed to them. And the next bit is just ask them, are they going to pay for it? Because ultimately that is then the initial formings of a business and that's what a business model starts to look like. Now in healthcare, it's really difficult. And this is why accelerators like HS exist. Because 
it's very risky in healthcare to change something that works and healthcare is often looked at as slow to innovate particularly when you think about the NHS and the reason is is because you know we can't just stop what we're doing in healthcare and redesign something and start again there needs to be a level of evidence behind what we're doing and people that are commissioning these services they feel that risk personally it's not as if that they can play with lives and try out a new thing because it looks cool it needs to actually solve a problem it needs a good evidence base and payment models um, you know that starts with your own business model because if things cost a lot then ultimately in healthcare they're not going to be bought because the NHS doesn't have money to spend on things that are nice to have it needs to go in and solve an actual problem um, the startups that are in the room will probably know about this one about interoperability. Nothing is interoperable with anything in healthcare. There's lots of different programs that do lots of different things, and there's specifically startups around solving that interoperability problem. Access and navigation who do you turn to? How do you get around the system? The pace is often slow, and it's a long time to get CE marked and regulated by the CQC and things like that. So, the reason that's well, that's the problem, and essentially, this is the solution. So, at HS. We build, we scale, and we invest in healthcare startups. And we do that via our two programs. Now you won't be able to read that, but we have a build program. Our build program selects talented individuals like yourselves, pre-seed teams, and some seeded teams as well. And we build tech companies from scratch and accelerate the teams that come into our program as well. And that's with two main goals, to get customers and get investment. We also have a scale programme where we work with the Department for International Trade and what we do is we export the best of British from the UK and we offer a soft landing spot for foreign companies that want to land in the UK and get up to scratch with their data protection information governance and form a business model around what healthcare in the UK looks like as well. And this is what that model looks like. So wherever you are in the innovation pathway, whether you're an individual with an idea, whether you've just got a very good skill set, which I'm sure most of the people in this room have to apply to a healthcare startup, you can apply to the build program and we'll connect you with like-minded people that want to solve problems and we'll put you around problems in the system that actually need solving, that actually have customers and we will help you get investment. You can plug in whether you're an individual, um, an early stage team, whether you're a startup with some investment, and into the scale program if you're full on SME. Um, our pipelines are obviously in the NHS where we've got a track record um, to corporates like RGA who we work with, which is Reinsurance Group of America, um, to capture the medtech and shortech space and obviously the international markets via the Department for International Trade. In terms of the fund and how we get our startups investment, now we have a lot of VCs and angels that surround our program that can opportunistically invest at any stage throughout this life cycle. And we also again work with RGA so you can sit in front of their investment committee for anything between 10k and 2 million. In terms of the team, again, you might not be able to read it, um, but there's myself, there's Alex, who's a trauma and orthopaedic surgeon by background. He's got four businesses, medical education business, he's spun out a VR business. He's always in accelerators around the world trying to find what's good and bad about them to make HS the best version of itself. There's Paul Godin, who exited the New York Bagel Company, so he loves scaling uh, companies. He's expert in that. And Robert, who's our finance guy, who's CFO of the Noble Group. We have a long, long list of advisors and partners that I won't bore you with. Um, but essentially, we need data scientists like you. We get the doctors applying, we get business experts applying, but we need people that can turn those ideas into reality. So anybody who's thinking of joining a startup, come and have a chat to me about joining the Build Programme, because we can plug you in.